We have some more news in the SEC versus Ripple case. As late yesterday evening, the SEC filed their response in partial opposition to Ripple's motion to seal certain documents in connection with the cross motions for summary judgment. Last night, we looked at the Ripple motion, so now we'll dive into the SEC one. We'll move a little quicker than last night. This one's about six pages. We want to get through it as fast as we can, but still understand what the SEC is objecting to. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's dive into this without any further ado from Attorney Finlan, link down in the video description. As always, the SEC respectfully submits this partial op opposition to defendant's motion to seal certain portions of the party's filings in connection with the motions for summary judgment. This is addressed to Judge Torres from the SEC team. The defendants, Ripple, Garlinghouse, and Larson, seek to seal 11 categories of documents reflected in sections A through K of the motion. The SEC does not oppose the sealing of information identified in six of those categories, and for the reasons below, the SEC will oppose the sealing of certain information in the remaining five. In category A, Ripple financial information, the SEC does not generally object to defendants' requests to redact full financial statements or other summary reports and forecasts. However, the SEC objects to defendants' overly broad approach to the redaction of financial information, which seems to entail redacting every mention of a fact or figure that could potentially be deemed financial. So the SEC doesn't really care if the full financial statements are redacted, but the one thing that they are opposed to here is the fact that Ripple is saying anything with a number associated with it is something they want to redact. Uh, take a look here further. The defendants seek to seal in their entirety all of Ripple's audited financial statements. The SEC does not oppose the sealing of most current financial statements from 2020, but opposes the sealing of earlier ones. Indeed, the recent statements defendants refer to as recent date back to 2013, and the most recent for 2020 is already years old. Thus, the SEC opposes the defendant's motion to seal five earlier financial statements, and they say stale records cannot support the necessary finding of harm, and they say cannot overcome the public's interest in disclosure. Remember, Ripple's a private company, so these otherwise would not be made publicly available. You can understand why Ripple would want this to be kept confidential, so their historical financial records won't be publicly available. However, the SEC's saying, uh, well, these are kind of old, and honestly, we think they should be out there. Let me know what you think in the comments. Defendants also seek to seal in their entirety all of Ripple's bank statements. While the SEC does not believe the documents should be sealed in their entirety, partial sealing, including redaction of account numbers, should be limited to the requirements of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. In the alternative, the SEC would be willing to agree to seal these documents in their entirety on the condition the SEC can rely on information from them in its public filings. Moreover, defendants seek to redact virtually all references to Ripple financial information in the SEC's 56.1 statements, including revenue and expenses, but this information is relevant to the court's decision on summary judgment because it evidences Ripple's reliance on XRP sales to fund its own operations and capital expenditures and therefore demonstrates Ripple's common interest with XRP purchasers and the reasonable expectation of XRP purchasers that they would profit from Ripple's efforts. So you see the SEC trying to tie this back to the Howey test, saying that this information in regards to their revenues from XRP sales, again, proves the connection between XRP holders and Ripple, the company, this common enterprise. Now, these SEC arguments have continued here throughout the course of the last two years, but because of the weakness, they're trying to resort to relying on these documents to prove that. I don't know how strong this argument is, 
but if they're allowed to use this, perhaps this will give them the extra boost they need as they're trying to argue for that common enterprise. Another example of overly broad redactions of information relevant to the Howey argument, they say, is the request to redact information or the amount of compensation Ripple offered to certain trading platforms to list XRP. This information also evidences Howey's common enterprise and the, quote, efforts of others' prongs and is therefore relevant to the summary judgment decision. Defendants also seek to redact the amount of XRP sales targeted at investors through programmatic sales as well as institutional sales. With respect to institutional sales, defendants seek to redact both the identities of counterparties and the amount. While the SEC does not object to the identity of the counterparty, it does object to redacting the amount. Ripple's XRP sales are relevant to all the Howey prongs, including the, quote, investment of money, and defendants cannot argue that the amount of these sales can have a detrimental effect on Ripple's business. So when you look at all of these arguments the SEC is making, it really does tie back to everything they're trying to argue in regards to the Howey test. Next, they say defendants seek broad redactions to the summary judgment exhibits. For example, defendants' proposed redactions include information about the on-demand liquidity product, Ripple's supporting declaration broadly states in conclusory fashion that its business would be harmed if information about the cost and expense of the product were publicly disclosed, but the declaration makes no effort to distinguish between the current and dated information about the product, including why older information remains, quote, highly sensitive. Ripple itself has put its product at the center of litigation, boasting that the purported success of the product uh, is a use for XRP that cuts against the SEC's argument that XRP offerings are securities offerings. The SEC is, of course, they argue, entitled to present evidence about Ripple's efforts to prop up ODL. And finally, they argue while defendants rely on the court's previous order to seal certain financial information, defendants ignore the court's admonition that its, quote, order today does not hold the same categories of information should be sealed or redacted for summary judgment briefing because the presumption of public access is at its strongest when the material is relevant to a court's decision on a motion for summary judgment. It's really interesting that they use the exact same quote from Judge Torres as Ripple did in their document to argue for disclosure. The SEC has fought disclosure on their own side, but is fighting vigorously here for disclosure on the Ripple side. Let's run through the next ones quickly. Category B, Ripple contract terms relating to XRP sales. Defendants want to redact the contacts that they've put at issue. The SEC doesn't reject or does not object to the redaction of the names, nor do they uh, object to the redaction of certain contractual terms, such as discount or commission rates. But the SEC doesn't believe any further sealing or redaction is appropriate here. Next, the identity of third parties. The SEC, they say, generally does not oppose the redaction of names with the following exceptions. First, the SEC objects to the motion to redact the company name from uh, GSR from the SEC's 56.1 statements, even though GSR has already been disclosed in public filings. They expand on that further. Second, defendants seek to redact the names of trading platforms throughout the summary judgment papers. Defendants have put the identity of these platforms at the center of the summary judgment motion, they say, asserting transactions on those platforms. Uh, their expert determined to be foreign-based did not occur in the U.S., but they say that the uh, the court has been asked by Ripple to redact these names of or the names of all of these platforms. Such redactions would impede the public's understanding of the SEC's analysis, they argue. And third, the SEC objects to the defendant's request to redact names of third parties that are in fact affiliated with Ripple. They list those numbers there. Uh, they say one of these entities was created and funded by Ripple and another is a foundation closely associated with Ripple. Next, category F, they say, compensation information. The SEC does not generally oppose the request to redact employees' compensation information. The SEC objects to their request to seal information related to the amount of XRP granted as executive uh, compensation to Ripple employees. 
This information, they argue, is not merely information about non-party employees' compensation and bonuses, but rather is evidence of all the Howey prongs and is relevant to the court's summary judgment finding. Category I, individual defendants' personal and financial information. This deals with Garling, House, and Larson. While the SEC does not generally object to the redaction of information relating to Larson's family members, the proposed redactions of Larson's deposition transcript are overly broad, they argue. The SEC further objects to defendants' request to fully seal certain of the individual defendants' account statements with a trading platform. These documents, they argue, are relevant to the analysis of the domesticity of defendants' XRP transactions. Remember, with Garlinghouse and Larson in particular, they were arguing that their transactions weren't necessarily U.S.-based, which meant that the SEC wouldn't have jurisdiction over those transactions. And finally here, the SEC respectfully requests the court order narrow redactions and not fully seal the documents as defendants propose in regards to those for the individual defendants. And finally, the SEC does not object to the sealing of the remaining types of, cate- or of documents in Category I for the motion. For all the foregoing reasons, they say the court should deny in part the motion, not in full, just for those ones listed there in particular. So we've got the SEC allowing some of these, or not so much allowing, but not objecting to the ceilings, but on about half, they're saying these are the reasons why we want these to be unsealed on the Ripple side. Let me know what you think down below. Should Ripple be able to seal these, or does that presumption of public access need to apply on both sides? sides. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found the information here to be helpful. If you did, drop a like. It helps the channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.